Dr. James Kirkland is director of the Robert and Arlene Kogod Center on Aging at the Mayo Clinic and Awaba Foundation Professor of Aging Research. Dr. Kirkland's research focuses on cellular senescence, age-related adipose tissue, and metabolic dysfunction and development of agents and strategies for targeting fundamental aging mechanisms to treat age-related chronic diseases and disabilities and to extend health span. He published the first article about drugs that clear senescent cells, senolytic agents. Dr. Kirkland showed these agents delay, prevent or alleviate multiple disorders in mouse models of human chronic diseases and aging phenotypes. He demonstrated that intermittently orally administered senolytics reduce senescent cell abundance in adipose tissue and blood markers of senescent cell burden in patients with diabetic kidney disease. Multiple clinical trials are currently underway of the senolytics that Dr. Kirkland identified, including dasatinib, quercetin and fisetin. And with that, let me start the interview. Dr. Kirkland, you are a doctor and researcher at the Mayo Clinic. So welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Good to be here. So Dr. Kirkland, kind of to start off, could you tell us what is your theory of why we age? What causes us to get older? Well, that's, that's a, a difficult question to answer. It's been uh, a question people have asked for hundreds or thousands of years. Um, uh, there, um, one of the, the evolution has um, ways of progressing, and one of the ways of progressing is through this process of natural selection, uh, survival of the fittest, and so forth. And uh, it's difficult for a species to evolve if it <laughs> if it uh, doesn't renew periodically. Um, also, um, having uh, children. Uh, and re replacing individuals who've been injured or uh, other kind, uh, run into other kinds of problems would result in um, a, a great increase in the population if it weren't yeah. counterbalanced by something. Right. And uh, so there are a lot of evolutionary forces that um, relate to aging. It's not actively selected for so much as evolution mm. ceases really to worry about you after you've had your children. Right. So to ev evolution's not concerned about you anymore. So you can basically, as it were, run out of program mm -hmm. and that's not going to be selected against. Now in social species where there's grandparenting uh, and uh, then you tend to find that individuals live well past the end of their reproductive uh, mm -hmm. prime mm -hmm. uh, in order to have uh, an older generation available to help bring up the children and to pass on information. So a number of, in a number of social species, we see this. Uh, but uh, in humans in particular, this is something which occurs. So we um, have developed methods to live well beyond the end of our reproductive age. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So it, it's essentially an accumulation of damage because, uh, because evolution is no longer interested in keeping us, because the mechanisms are no longer there to keep us going, really. It, it's partly that, and partly there's something called, the, it's a long term, we call it antagonistic pleiotropy. Mm. Things that, like uh, genes and proteins and so forth, that might be good in younger individuals, over time can cause damage mm. and result in damage to older individuals past reproductive age. So evolution is always going to select for things that give an advantage to children and young adults, even if it's at the expense of uh, having problems later on in life. Right, yes. So I saw in, your, in one of your papers, you spoke about, you, you wrote about something called the unitary theory of fundamental aging. And I think you attributed this to Dr. Lithgow, is, is that right? At well, Dr. Lithgow came up with a theory called the geroscience hypothesis. And what okay. that holds, is that fundamental aging processes appear to be root cause contributors to the bulk of disorders and conditions that cause most morbidity, mortality, and health expenditures. Now that's called the geroscience hypothesis. Mm. Um, after that, uh, there were groups that came up with, um, including myself and many others, what we call the pillars of aging. 
you know, right. what are the fundamental aging processes? How can they be, be divided up? And people divide them up into anywhere from four to 13 uh, mm -hmm. sets of processes. We came up with um, the unitary hypothesis. And that's, you know, people had proposed that these um, fundamental aging processes are interlinked. And there's quite a bit of evidence now that many of them are. Um, our theory, and it's only a theory at this point, and it may be wrong, you know, that it's a theory, so we're testing it. And our argument is that interventions that target individual fundamental aging processes um, may affect the rest in a positive way. So we've got, there are eight or nine interventions now that we know will target these fundamental aging processes. And it's looking increasingly like, but it's only a theory at the moment, and we're not sure, that targeting any one of these processes with a drug or other kind of intervention might in a beneficial manner affect many or perhaps even all of the rest. And if that's true, what it would lead to um, is the necessity of combining interventions that target different fundamental aging processes and asking, are they less than additive, which mm -hmm. the unitary theory might predict? Because if you, if you have two drugs and they're both providing some benefit, does that, is that benefit less than additive? Is it additive or might it even be synergistic? Right. So like taking senolytics and NAD boosters. <laughs> yes. The thing is, we know that if you clear senescent cells, that results in an increase in NAD in tissues because senescent mm. cells produce a factor that inhibits an enzyme on immune cells called macrophages called CD38. And this is something that sticks out from the wall of macrophages. And what it does is it breaks down NAD. So senescent cells produce a substance that increases a factor that reduces tissue NAD. Conversely, if you drop NAD, you get an increase in molecules that we call reactive oxygen species that are very damaging, and they will cause cellular senescence. So these processes are completely interlinked. And uh, you we find that if you give um, senolytics, uh, you know, there's uh, some evidence now from papers that we did with Eduardo Chini and others that um, you actually boost, you, you actually prevent some of the decline in NAD that occurs. Interesting, yeah. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.